released in 2016 on both the PlayStation Vita and PS4, Gundam Breaker 3 retains many aspects of its predecessor and keeps the frantic gameplay intact. It does away with some of the modes but introduces a few new ones such as Core Assault that sees you attacking or defending with the objective being to clear out all of the enemies in order to make the core vulnerable to attack. Team Deathmatch also makes an appearance which as you would expect sees two teams facing off against each other in spectacular fashion. The level of customization on offer here is truly impressive with nearly every aspect of your machine being tailored to how you see fit. May that be its weapon, armor or even down to the pink color, there is so much to choose from. If you're a fan of mech games or especially the Gundam series as a whole, this is one to put on your list. Originally released for the PlayStation 3 back in 2008, Flower was that game company's first release. As the name suggests, you take control of a flower petal, with the experience revolving around exploring each environment and the objective being to hit flowers placed within them, which results in your petal producing a trail, as well as a spectacular burst of colour that gradually takes over each area as you progress. The control method utilises the built-in motion sensing capabilities of the Vita, and at first it can honestly feel quite jarring but after some time of the game it all becomes natural. If you missed this one out when it was first released, the Vita version is one of the best ways to play it. With the absence of Monster Hunter for the PlayStation Vita, it's no surprise to see several games for the system that offer up what is essentially the same premise. Tokiden Kiwami manages to stand out and offer one of the more enjoyable demon slaying games available on the go. For those who have previously experienced the series, it retains many of the aspects that made it so great. Combat plays out in real time with both standard and heavy attacks as well as a way to improve each hit by utilizing your stamina gauge. It all soon becomes routine with each mission rewarding the player depending on their performance, leading to a whole host of weapons and abilities that can be earned. Although not as fleshed out as Monster Hunter or even Soul Sacrifice, Tokiden Kiwami is still definitely worth a look. Malicious Rebirth is an enhanced port of the original that brings along with it new chapters, bosses and movesets. The main goal is to overcome enemies known as the Keepers, and ultimately an immensely evil entity called the Malicious. Every stage kicks off right from the get-go, each with a boss and all of their minions present. To take them out you are armed with a mantle that grants you a whole host of abilities, such as transforming into a fist for melee combat, as well as a projectile weapon that is capable of locking onto several enemies at once. What makes Malicious Rebirth Rebirth unique is the use of on-screen cues that translate the amount of damage that you've taken. When the player takes damage, your limbs will start to disappear one by one, depending on how badly injured you are. There is a way to counteract the effects of this by consuming aura which is gained each time an enemy is defeated. If you're looking for an easy to pick up and play experience on the Vita, Malicious Rebirth is the perfect way to hack and slash the hours away. Titan Souls was released in 2015 on several different platforms including the PlayStation Vita. It depicts a space between Earth and the real world that is home to Titan Souls and the idol Titans tasked with their care. The action takes place from a 2D top-down perspective, very reminiscent of the old Zelda games, with your objective being to defeat the 19 Titans that occupy the world. Now what makes Titan Souls stand out is the complete lack of varying weapons. Instead you are only armed with one arrow that can defeat enemies in one hit, but that also applies to you, making matters worse is the single arrow needs to be charged in order to use while standing still. This makes you an easy target for the titans, so half of the fun is figuring out their patterns of movement and planning ahead in order to attack. Set in a world where both animals and humans once coexisted in harmony, Fantasy Hero depicts the arrival of evil entities known as the Decoders. The world was cast aside in an explosion of evil and destruction, causing the remnants of society to hide in order to survive. You get to choose from a group of heroes, each with their own distinct characteristics, who are set on turning the tide of the war, and lead to retrieve a weapon rumoured to hold incredible power. On the gameplay front, the controls respond very well, with each battle playing out in real time. I Items can be mapped to various buttons, making them quickly accessible when the action heats up, as well as a whole host of different spells and magic to master. 
Silent Hill Book of Memories is a departure from what we usually expect from the franchise, essentially a spin-off of the popular survival horror series. It instead sees players plunged into a hack and slash adventure set across various monster filled dungeons. As the game opens you are presented with a mysterious book known as the Book of Memories. Written within its pages is a journal of the main character's entire life. It grants you the power to change the text with each outcome affecting the narrative, sometimes for the better but mostly for the worst. From the get go you get the choice of up to 5 separate character classes which can each be slightly customised to suit your style of play. You'll find a huge array of short and long range weapons to aid you throughout the journey as well as a few melee attacks to fight off the hordes of monsters waiting for you around every corner. Although not quite the Silent Hill we've come to know and love, it is still a worthy purchase on the Vita. Developed by Renegade Kid and released in 2015, Zeo Drifter takes a lot of inspiration from the early Metroid games and sees you taking control of an astronaut whose ship is hit by an asteroid. Due to the accident, you are tasked with exploring four nearby planets that possess the means to repair your ship. Each planet depicts its own unique environment that consists of various areas. Colourful art style really helps to convey these unique differences. Much like the Metroidvania style games that have come before, Zeo Drifter depends on the use of power-ups in order to progress and with most being earned upon defeating a boss, each feels rewarding in its own right. An impressive level of customization is also present in the game, which allows you to invest in your weapon's speed, range and effectiveness that opens up several different styles of play. Taking place in a cyberpunk themed world, Neon Chrome is a top down twin stick shooter that sees the player fill in the shoes of a human clone tasked with taking out an enemy known as the Overseer. The entire game takes place in a tall building in which the Overseer resides waiting for you on the top floor and with each level being procedurally generated there is an immense amount of replay value with each playthrough differing from the last. The gameplay is simple and easy to get used to with the objective being to take out all of the enemies on screen, find loot and upgrade your weapons with everything you Event, carrying over each time you die. Neon Chrome offers up a lot of fun on the go and is definitely not one to pass up. Released in 2014, Puyo Puyo Tetris combines both franchises into an impressive mashup of the two that celebrates both equally. Firstly, the Puyo Puyo style tasks you with matching four or more of the same coloured blobs known as Puyos. With the opportunity to perform chain combos by placing the Puyos correctly, the game opens up to reveal a deep level of strategy that can result in a hefty points bonus upon finishing each stage. In the Tetris style, for those not familiar with the formula, it sees you dropping several differently shaped blobs onto the playing area, with the objective being to complete a horizontal line that will make it vanish. What really mixes the gameplay up is the fusion mode, which combines both styles into one and with both local and online play, there is plenty to keep you engaged once you've made it through everything the single player mode offers. This is one to add to your library. 